Hi, everyone. My name is Nurhak Tunjar, and I'm one of your librarians here at ECSU. I'm here to talk about critical thinking and how it applies to academic research and library world, and most importantly, your content creation, and how you can utilize library resources at your, at your work. My presentation will be outlined in three sections. Let me share my screen. Steps to research process, evaluation of resources, and utilizing resources, what should we cite and not cite. So <clears throat> throughout your study here at ECSU, you will be gathering, organizing your work in various platforms, including your e-portfolios. Therefore, I hope this session will guide you to create a high quality work when utilizing library resources, and eventually will result in showcasing high quality work in your e-portfolios or other platforms. Also, I hope to give you the understanding of a librarian's role here. We are not merely librarians who check in, check out books to, your, to you or guide you where the library resources are. Um, <clears throat> but more importantly, as your librarians, we are here to help you and guide you to push thinking critically when evaluating resources that you will be using at your work here at ECSU and for the rest of your academic career. Now, I would like to open my portion of presentation by reading from Dr. Martin Luther King's famous saying, thinking critically, about thinking critically. He said, education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence to discern the true from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one thing intensively and to think critically. So what is the name? Now, what is critical thinking? Let's look at the definition. Critical thinking is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, and analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluation of information gathered from or generated by observation experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. According to the foundation of critical thinking, this is a definition that has a lot of action verbs that today we will be emphasizing on the evaluation of resources. As librarians, we give extra, extra importance to that. So let, now let's look at some examples, shall we? But before we look at the examples, um, I would like to say um, more about the action verbs. So as you may all know, academic focuses on the creation of new concepts when the researcher seeks relevant information in articles, books, and other resources using critical thinking skills. These concepts apply to any content that you will be creating, not only research. <clears throat> it can be a blog post, it can be an artwork or a music that you might be composing even. It can be a virtual or visual element that you, you might be creating here at ECSU or throughout your career. So thus librarians play an essential role to assist content creators, students um, to sharpen their critical thinking skills, not merely by showing them you know, how to locate, the resources that they, they need, but showing them most importantly to analyze, evaluate, and how to incorporate these resources at, their, at the body of their work. That is our um, goal as librarians uh, and our mission, primary mission, um, to make sure that uh, we are here always to guide you wherever um, at, at what stage of your cre content creation um, of your work. So 
let's have a look at an example now. Bad example and a good example. So here is what critical thinking may look like in a discussion essay uh, or post. So a bad example would be if you were to write a discussion post that just defines two education philosophies, right? That's definitely going to be based on research, but there isn't um, anything new. There is none of us, the writer, um, the, the thinker in there, correct? So as a discussion post that one doesn't require any critical thinking. And let's look at the good example, on the other hand, a discussion post that does demonstrate and show critical thinking would be a post where you are comparing two education philosophies and reflecting on the way that those philosophies could or could not be used to inform teaching. And plus, uh, you have a new perspective than the application. So that's tying two philosophies into a classroom environment. Um, so the bad example we see there in a discussion post where critical thinking is not evident, but in this matter example, the critical thinking is clear. There is that new application that we are looking for. So you get the idea. Let's look at the, some um, uh, critical thinking red flags um, and cautions to avoid. So, yeah, ideas supported with a single library resource. That is a red flag. Sometimes it helps to know, you know what to do, um, what to look by. <clears throat> Um, by uh, what not to do. If you see any of these cautions, red flags in your scholarly work, it's a little you know, red flag that there isn't just enough critical thinking uh, yet. So if an essay that you see yourself um, or, or, or any work, type of work that you, you see yourself supporting an idea, that you have an idea, brilliant idea, <laughs> but using only a single library resource or any resource out there over and over again uh, as an evidence to support, to back up that um, awesome idea, then you are relying on just a cited resource, a single piece of research or, or a resource that is really, really good, but um, it is, um, it helps to have that validated or backed up in other places with additional resources, right? You might need um, more evidence to support your brilliant idea. Next, extensive use of quotations. Learn paraphrasing and summarizing techniques. That's, that's what I say to my students all the time. So you must make sure that you learn paraphrasing techniques. Um, anytime in there is an essay that has, um, yes, that has extensive coding, um, if there's code after code all over the place, that also is a red flag, yes. So as a writer, you want to be in control of that, okay? And instead of relying on other resources heavily, um, even if they happen to be amazing library resources, amazing um, you know, sources as evidence backing up that idea, it helps for you to paraphrase that with your own words, with your own critical thinking. And that's what we also uh, look at that as librarians. We don't we want our library users to use the resources that we provide for them, um, blending with their own strategies, um, how and with their own words to phrase it and summarize them when they are incorporating these resources at their work. Makes sense? So next one is use of sources with questionable credibility. Okay, 
So the next, this one is um, about having sources that have questionable cred credibility. So if you look at your reference list, that you need a reference list, and there's some kind of if sources there, and not a lot of named authors, could be a red flag. A lot of sources that come from general websites, not websites of academic journals or other reliable sources. If you notice that you have some sources that with, with questionable credibility, that means what you are basing your ideas on is a shaky foundation. You don't want to base your ideas on a shaky foundation. You want to have a little bit more solid research here. Today, we will also talk about the evaluation of resources and the techniques of it. And the final red flag that I would like to emphasize here is um, the restatement or summary of what a library resource just said. Um, this is an important bullet point also because that in then you know if you find yourself just reading what sources said over and over again it means we are missing that new original tone right your argument your assessment your own critical thinking so if any of these four things that I mentioned today, you notice when you're revising your work or reading through, through a draft, you can say, okay, uh, I think I need to add a little bit more critical thinking here. And so also today, um, again, again, we are going to look at how a basic paragraph looks like when we are incorporating a resource by using our critical thinking. Okay, synthesis. It, I would like to talk about synthesis as one of the important actions of critical thinking is when we take a whole bunch of elements and we take all of those things and pull them together into something new, into a cohesive whole. So really those independent elements that could be a whole bunch of research, like five different articles and combined with books and other resources. So for example, I synthesize when I read those, let's say five articles. It was me and my brain that pulled them together and create something new. I did the synthesizing. We have to compare and contrast to, to what um, we need to say. Um, we have to evaluate and interpret the information, and then we still have to use it to create something new, uh, our original thought. Okay, now I would like to talk about um, the steps to the research process. Research involves applying critical thinking to information when a researcher evaluates the material, relevancy, and develops a perspective. Correct? So, the goal is to think critically about the information, not merely repeat its ideas. The research process um, is not necessarily linear, meaning not in that order. There could be overlapping orders. It's not one, two, three, <laughs> um, and can cannot you know, again can often overlap and not necessarily in specific order. You need to know that. Uh, as part of the initial preparation steps of the research process, these steps are essential preparation before starting your research. So the first step is investigating, um, understanding your assignment, finding a topic to research, identifying a problem, and establishing a thesis statement when necessary before starting to search for resources. Okay. Um, now I will switch, uh, switch uh, my slides um, in a second and we'll show you the library guide that I created for you. But I would like to mention about those steps first, um, then I will switch my um, slides to the library guide. So again, 
tips for investigating before starting your research are important. You need to know what, what kind of assignment uh, structures that you are facing with. Is it a paper or discussion post? Uh, it, what kind of format it is? And so then you can establish a solid idea or a thesis statement so you know what you are looking for. Okay, now let's look at the tips for investigating and before starting your research. Now the type of paper, as I mentioned, um, the, the, the classroom plot professor's guidelines are very important to know those guidelines and requirements and identifying a topic is an essential part. Avoid choosing a topic that is too broad. When choosing a topic, identifying a thesis statement will guide you through the research process and help you avoid wasting time on unnecessary resources. That's, what, that's why as librarians, we emphasize on these preparation tips before even you start looking for resources. The topic, what kind of keywords that you are using, what kind of thesis statement or your, the direction of your goal when you're writing your paper and what kind of, uh, again, um, synonyms, of rel um, synonyms of keywords that you, that's related with your topic. So then we can use these terms terms in the search and apply it in the search strategies when you, we are looking for a resource for your needs. Most importantly, outlining of your paper um, is highly related with resources that you will be needing uh, in terms of how you will be structuring your paper. If you need, let's say, um, three examples of an, a scholar, um, you might need to inform your librarian what kind of uh, structure you have in your mind or outline your mind so then uh, um, we will know what kind of examples that we will be searching together. That's why we emphasize on these steps uh, as librarians so that you can create a high quality bibliography um, or summary of resources while you are getting your resources because sometimes you're responsible to create an annotation of bibliography um, of these resources and indicate why you're using, using these resources at your work. Now, step two, searching and locating information. It's only two steps away. You just go to the www.ecsu.edu and under academics tab from the upper menu, click on the library to access the library online catalog. Now at this stage, I will just stop my uh, stop um, sharing my screen um, of the presentation and I will switch to um, the main Now, let's look at these steps, shall we? So from here, under academics, when you click on the library, you will get the um, search box. And from here, uh, you can start searching and when you scroll down and you if you click on subject guides and under C critical thinking and academic search research this is a guide that I created for you so from here we already covered the first um, investigating first three steps of preparation to research process, investigating before starting your research, research, searching and location of information and understanding the types of information. Now, I would like to talk about understanding types of information 
enable them. The distinction between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources differs according to the discipline. So here's a basic structured explanation of types of information. Note that examples are not limited to these listed below. These are primary sources. That could be journals, conference proceedings, oral history interviews, secondary resources, and tertiary resources, which are textbooks, and these are distillation and collection of primary and secondary resources. And there are some tabs here, when to use articles, and there are selected library databases, and a note on peer review. What it is, is that have been evaluated by the writer's professional colleagues or peers, um, need a reminder on the peer review process. There's another library guide that explains that, that I cre created for you. So types of periodicals uh, differs uh, by the format um, and audience authority usage. And these are some examples. For example, um, the Times magazine or the Atlantic is uh, one of the you know, popular magazines here. But on the other hand, the New York Times, again, newspaper, the, there's newspaper, New York Times, um, when you look at it, uh, there, it refers to a much more general audience. But it's, on the other hand, a scholarly peer reviewed article audience is uh, more knowledge, knowledgeable scholars in the field, language is more technical. And scholarly journals, journals are written by researchers, academics, scientists, professors, etc. Uh, and there are some videos here, I put here short videos explaining information cycle and types of information. Um, same for books, when to use them, and there are some uh, ebook uh, databases links that I provided for you here. Um, and the types of information according to the disciplines. The types of information may vary across the disciplines. Again, as I said before, it's important to identify the purpose of research as well as the methodology of research before even trying to locate primary or secondary or tertiary resources. And here's an information timeline. And let's look at the information timeline to understand the types of resources better. Um, as you see, social media within minutes, uh, news sites, TV, radio, daily newspapers are within days, um, and weekly magazines are produced within a week. Mo monthly magazines within a month, scholarly journal journals, um, it takes maybe more than three months to, to get published. Uh, and for the books, um, it might take much more longer. And that's the, it's, it's at the bottom of the information timeline. Um, next, I will be talking about evaluation that I would like to um, emphasize on, and that's probably the core of the um, today's session. Evaluation is one of the significant steps of the research process. If you are not evaluating the resources, you will be using your paper or any work, then it will slow you down. You need sufficient well evaluated resources support your, um, your research thesis statement or your goal. While searching for the resources you need, it is important to remember there are five tips. Currency, relevancy, authority, accuracy, and purpose. The source is out of date or too old, that's a red flag. If the source is recent and has information about the latest advances and ideas, then that's what you will be looking for in terms of currency. If it is directly related with your topic and clearly helps the support of your argument, it's relevant, that's what you, you would be looking for. If it is incorrect, if the facts doesn't seem um, very important or true or supporting what you will be saying at your work and not relevant enough, then that's a red flag. If the source is not intended to 
uh, sell something, market something, um, or is biased, then um, um, that's something that you would be also looking in terms of uh, evaluation parameters. So please keep in your mind um, this library guide that I created for you and all of these five tips that will guide you, um, make sure that uh, you are asking the right questions. When was the information published or posted? Has the information been revised or updated? And what to avoid and what to look basically. And there are a couple of exercises at the end of each tip that I designed for you um, from our library resources. And I hope that will be beneficial uh, for you to make your decision in choosing the right resource. Relevance, uh, for example, uh, is something to do with the scope of the resource. And, if, and see if that resource is matching with the scope of your research or your um, goal when you would be creating a content, whether it's a research or any, any type of work, basically. It can be a poster design. It can be a composition of a music a piece, anything that you might still need an evidence or resource to support back up your own work. Where should you look at to determine the currency of a resource? Print or online sources. You might need to read the abstract or summary first, then the introduction and conclusion. What the avoid? Sources that provide minimal and less useful information for your research project and sources that provide too little or too broad information for your research. Authority. Authority has something to do with um, if an author is an expert in his or her field. What are the author's credentials or affiliations? Is the author the in interpreter of the information or the original creator of the information? Look at the organization or body that published that information. Is it an authoritative publishing platform? Um, is it a peer reviewed journal or not? Does it have an ex explicit position or biases? You know, in today's media, for example, there are uh, cited news newspapers and there are unsighted newspapers, knowing which one is free of biases and free of uh, cited uh, views helps to determine uh, the authority aspect of a resource and thus will help you to, uh, to choose the right resource that you need. Accuracy. Accuracy has something to do with uh, asking questions of the list of references cited in the work, for example. Does a list of references include scholarly names, sources? And um, again, what are there any uh, grammar mistakes or typos? Is the text poorly organized? Um, you need to avoid sources that are poorly written and needs editing. Sources have no reference list cited to prove the information is, um, yes, is correct. Sources with gram grammatical and spelling errors. Sources that are opinion-based and full bias and lacking facts. Those are the things to avoid. And there are some examples that I pre provided for you here. Lastly, purpose. For purpose is, um, it gives a reason for the information to exist in the first place and knowing why the information was created is a key to evaluation. Please have a look at the resources below to explain um, and explain the purpose of the information. Um, you can say, for example, number four is a movie review site. Number five is an American Society for Nutrition. Those are the purposes at first place why these resources are created. Uh, and what they avoid? Sources that are primarily opinion-based without facts or statistics and sources 
that are primarily concerned with selling and full of advertisements. Those are the uh, items that you should be avoiding um, to use at your work. Okay, lastly, I would like to talk about utilizing resources. So after identifying, locating and evaluation of resources created by other people, um, now it's time to utilize that information. The question is how to incorporate this information into your work by blending your critical thinking skills. Um, so we, we talk about the definition of um, critical thinking, right? And then we talk about academic research, we look at the you know, red flags, and, but we also look at um, synthesis, you know, how to make a, our own synthesis by blending um, information, taking information from multi-resources and coming, um, coming out um, with a new idea. Makes sense. So when incorporating others' work in academic writing or any, any type of um, work, um, we need to remember that we have to cite them to avoid plagiarizing, but not only for avoiding plagiarizing, we have to make sure that we properly um, use our own wording to cite them, but at the same time, we have to make sure that uh, we follow the appropriate citation style and for according to the right discipline uh, in which you are um, writing. So citing resources properly uh, is important, but what, what to cite, what not to cite helps us to determine a little here, um, Non-textual information that you find in other resources, sound diagrams, illustrations, charts, videos, digital media, pictures, or other visual materials. These are all that you need to cite. A student uh, asked me the other day, how would I cite images? How would I cite a YouTube video? How would I cite a, a statistics or chart? It's very important to know that not only articles or textual, textual information that you need to cite, but there are also non-textual information that you found in other resources. A, a link from a blog post, for example, on the web, you still need to cite it. What not to cite is your own words, your own ideas, original research and common knowledge. How to cite depends again on the discipline that you are studying, um, know your citation style, consult your classroom professor. Every discipline citation style, style is different. MLA, APA, Chicago, Trubin are the most common citation styles. Know three citing methods, quotations, paraphrasing, summarizing. Remember, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of this presentation. Avoid using quotations. That's a red flag of a lack of critical thinking. If you blend uh, paraphrasing and summarizing techniques with quotations, that is an evidence of your, your own work, your own critical thinking, and you did the work, work there by blending all of these resources, making a synthesis um, when you are incorporating them in your work. So you can watch the uh, quick video explaining the citation, citing methods uh, when using information sources for your work. Um, but please don't hesitate to come to me or, or any of the librarians here at ECSU about um, uh, getting more information about the citation, whether, about whether it is a citation style that you're looking for or the methods that you are trying to learn more about paraphrasing quotation or summarizing techniques. Okay, so finally, I would like to talk about a little bit uh, plagiarizing um, about this section. 
so tips to avoid plagiarizing is again use quotation for for the exact wording you use directly use your own words um, when paraphrasing and summarizing and know how much percentage on uh, that you paraphrase or summarize percentage is important again pro provide citations for all quotations summary summarizes and paraphrases provide citations for any material again including non-text resources such as images audio information obtained by email even or a chat even so you may you you want to make sure that there is a way to citation citing any type of information that you will be using at your work ask a librarian to help you with citing your resources properly in the required format when in doubt if it is a piece of common knowledge or not just cite avoid oversighting and it is another form of plagiarizing make sure to incorporate your own ideas with the citations and explain them now speaking about explanation and analyzing the citation explaining and analyzing information you're citing is the most important part of your research process that lets you incorporate your own critical thinking skills it basically lets your reader see how to combine your own ideas with the existing research in the field after introducing the information you must always state why you're citing your research and connects us to the beginning of this guide. Remember the evaluating resources according to your research topic section and why you choose these resources in the first place. For, from the carefully evaluated resources that you gather with the help of your librarian, now it is time to choose, identify some sections that most support your thesis argument take notes while you're identifying these sections and make sure you remember where you find these sections think about citation embedding in your paper in three steps introduce the citation first uh, tell us who is the author um, and idea claim that your citation will support cite the citation using one of the three citation methods as we mentioned before and this is a part that contains solid facts that stand as evidence to back up your point and lastly explain how this information supports your thesis in your own words using your critical thinking indicate whether you agree or disagree with the information you cite and explain how it connects to your own standpoint again this is highly something to do with we just discussed in the evaluation section when you're evaluating a resource when you're when you're searching a resource and make a decision to find a resource you you look at certain things the bibliography um, of the resource who wrote it um, those five step, five tips that we discussed accuracy relevancy um, authorship, uh, purpose, uh, all of these and now will come in handy when you will start explaining the citation and giving a reason how it supports your thesis when you're embedding those resources in your work. So this is a basic uh, famous paragraph burger. I didn't create this. This is an example from um, a Sunday, a citation sandwich that, that I got from Tacoma Community College Library Research Guide. Um, and this is a basic paragraph that has um, the, these three layers. So the first layer is introducing, and then the second layer is putting the citation from another resource. And the last layer here, as you see, is uh, explaining that evidence, the fact that supports your critical thinking. And the last layer is the most important part, actually, because it is your critical thinking, your synthesis. Basically, you're explaining there uh, that evidence that you found. I would like to also, in, in my last portion of presentation, will uh, will show you some. Um, resources that I selected for you 
uh, about critical thinking. Uh, there are three books that I selected for you here. Um, four, sorry. Um, and the last one is Rethinking Learning for, for a Digital Age. Uh, and there are also videos on critical thinking that I put here. And the last one is what is critical thinking um, and critical thinking and problem solving. I hope this helps for you uh, to showcase your scholarship after you're done uh, accomplishing um, your final projects and if it is time to you know now showcase them in platforms such as e-portfolios and it might these resources might give you some ideas about how to display your scholarship in e-portfolios and these are the portfolio building sites remember it's very important also after you are done and completing your projects um, organize them and display your scholarship, make yourself visible uh, to the other uh, world, world and make sure that you market yourself by building these e-portfolios or other platforms um, using uh, some softwares and programs. And these are the also cloud resources for e-portfolios use, useful for storing additional content. Okay, this concludes my presentation today. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I'm your librarian, uh, one of your librarians here at ECSU. I am located at Fine Arts, sent, uh, Fine Arts Building, second floor, room 234. My name is Nur Haq, and thank you so much for attending to the today's session and thank you so much for your time.